Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Senegro Boys Basketball Show. I'm your host, Kevin Conrad of SenegroSportsNetwork.com, along with Senegro Boys Basketball Head Coach with Hawkins and Coach. we got a great place here at Arnie's right in front of the fireplace. It's really warm this morning. We need it. We need yeah, that. I would say very, very cold outside today, but a nice warm uh, fire here at Arnie's. And Coach, uh, this past weekend, the 55th Johnson County Tournament uh, down at Franklin, the host school, uh, tough one for the Senegro Trojans, losing in the championship game 39-32. It was a tough basketball game. It was a it was a well played championship game. It was a very slow type of tempo. Uh, we tried to speed the tempo a little bit and uh, weren't able to all the time. Uh, you know they made a lot of shots. Um, they were 16 for 29 from the field. We were 11 for 29. Um, but it was a game that was possession by possession that we that championship games often are and. You know, what we tried to do after the basketball game with our players was just talk about the very aspect that, you know, we won the first one and uh, they've won the second one and we hopefully have another opportunity come tournament time. So uh, very hard to beat a good team on their floor twice and uh, uh, we got them once, but they got us last night. Coach, maybe break down this game a little bit in that first quarter. You led uh, at the end of the first quarter by a couple. Anderson McCoy with a three-pointer right at the end of the first quarter. Yeah, we, you know, it was back and forth, and uh, I think we were behind most of the quarter. Uh, and, and then finally we, we got it rolling a little bit, but still very, you know, it's what, 9 to 8 with five seconds to go. And uh, then Anderson gets that breakaway, gave us that spark. But that was his only make of the night, a, a long shot like that. But uh, certainly it gave us some enthusiasm going into the second quarter. And, um, uh, we were up uh, 11 to nine at that point. Also in that first quarter, Michael got on track, five points, got a three pointer and, and also a two pointer. Well, I think their emphasis was so much toward Tyler there early that Mike did find some things, but, um, they, they, Franklin presents a lot of problems because of their size inside. And then also their wings out wide, uh, you know, we had hoped to be able to attack, um, and, uh, the wings really made it very hard on us and, uh, our personnel are, are, is not the type that will step up in that gap and do something with it, uh, the personnel we had on the floor at the time. So um, we really had some issues, even though Michael did get it going a little bit. Coach, you're, you're down by, I think, one point there at halftime. Third quarter, it looked like you made some adjustments. Uh, you brought Michael more out on top of the, of, the, of the offense. Well, the reason we did that was it appeared that he was the only one that could penetrate through the gaps. And the other thing is he was taller, and I thought maybe he could see and find Ty, but he just didn't find him enough, uh, although the adjustments worked early, and uh, we built up a 24-20 lead. Um, and in a game like this, I mean, that's a good lead. You know, they had had us 20-14, to and we went 10 straight to go 24-20. So I thought we were even adjusting as we ended the half, and uh, – uh, then the beginning of the second half, I felt really good about what we had done. And defensively, when you're four minutes into the third quarter and you're holding them to about 20, I mean, you really can't do a lot more than that in high school basketball. You know, I mean, we our, our kids really played our defense well last night. I'll say, Coach, uh, I thought Tyler in that third quarter did a great job working that baseline, came off some picks, got some good looks, got five points, but uh, just couldn't really seem to find him after that. It, we just, uh, you know, we kept missing him, and uh, it took just exactness last night in precision, which in a championship game, uh, you always talk about uh, commitment, you talk about focus, and you talk about the will to win. Um, we would, like when we needed to look left, we looked right. You know, when we needed to look inside, we'd look to the side, you know, and um, we just missed, and our guard reads last night really struggled. Now, in that third quarter, when Al came in there a little bit, he did flash up in there a little bit just to relieve a few things. And with Michael on top, it seemed to help. So, I mean, there were some good things that happened in that third quarter. And then the fourth quarter, Coach, you kind of go back with Michael doing the flashing and the cutting and the posting, the low post and the high post. But just, again, just couldn't quite get it to him. We just, you know, putting him where we put him in the fourth quarter was last, less advantageous. But the problem was we were getting no offensive rebounds with everybody else. So, you know, then we thought, okay, maybe we can pop. Maybe Austin can hit a three. Maybe Anderson can hit a three. Joey hit some threes, you know, and with Tyler out there, we thought, well, maybe, maybe Mike can rebound the basketball because he was getting absolutely no rebounds from out on top. Uh, he couldn't get there. You know, you can't get from 20 feet to the basket to get a rebound. And, you know, we were trying anything and everything just 
just to have a few plays. And we got it to 29-26, and I really thought we're in business here. We're at the free throw line for two free throws that would make it a two-possession game, which would have been the first time since 24-20, to and that had been a long time ago. It had been, you know, like the four-minute mark third quarter. This is about five- or six-minute mark of the fourth. And I, I was feeling really good about it because I thought if we could get a big two, like a five-point lead, we, we then maybe could speed the tempo. You know, we could really speed the tempo. We hadn't been able to use our press much with only scoring 29 points. So now maybe by getting it to 31, we could get a couple quick, you know, just a couple of those, just a couple steals or a rotation out of our defense that would be effective or force them into a travel. Um, and we missed the free throws, and it was huge. And, and uh, then they came down, and, and King hit that three out there. They only hit two threes last night, and that was a big one to tie it at 29. I'll say, Coach, and then uh, they were able to – get a three-point lead, they took it to a two-possession lead, and then you're in a situation where obviously you can't sit back in the zone, you've got to come after them defensively. And then when we did come after them with this, with them with the lead, they had the confidence. You know, it's all about, you know, they talk about in scheduling, it's when you play somebody. Well, sometimes in a possession-by-possession possession game, when you are able to use your pressure, it's about what the situation is. If you've got them three to five, point, five points down and they're having, there's pressure on them. But if they've got the lead, four to six points, then the pressure's on us to make that steal. And consequently, they got it to the basket, maybe missed a shot, but here came the two big guys at 6'6 six, six over top of us rebounding, and then we turned around and fouled. And uh, so it was, a, it was a really tough thing. Our team is so close to being a really good team. I mean, they really are. But we have so little margin for error, and, uh, and our kids know it. It's not, it's not something they don't know, but – uh, boy, we just, we've just got to get a little tougher in some of those situations. And then, Coach, after another timeout, you tried that half-court trap. And to Franklin's credit, I mean, they executed. They got the ball where they needed to uh, in the middle and got another uh, basket. Well, and, and the thing of it is, uh, uh, you know, with the timeout, they know what we're going to do. They've practiced it. They're in the lead. And, again, if, you know, sometimes when you can use your pressure defense when you're ahead, it's even more effective because the pressure is on the opponent. If you remember late uh, there when they were making a comeback in the first basketball game, we, we put the press right on them, and twice they just threw the ball out of bounds because they just couldn't believe, you know, with the lead and, and all, the, uh, all of that, you know, with us with the lead. Uh, but last night they had the lead and they confidently knew where they needed to get it. And boy, those big guys came in there and, and just got the ball, you know, and willed it to, into the basket for them. For them, and that's the difference in the game. And coach, you talk about needing some perimeter shooting. Joey Linky, I thought, did a great job with that uh, last night. Three three pointers uh, ended up leading the Trojans with eleven. You know, I think that's the thing. Uh, Joey's continuing to get more consistent all the time. He's a fine basketball player, gives everything he's got, very good leader. Um, it's just that uh, we've got to get, you know, for as much as we shot the ball and worked on offensive rebounding, you, you would feel that um, that wasn't the case. And I think in this possession-by-possession possession game, and maybe the first one for guys like Anderson McCoy and Austin Crowder and, and some of those, maybe the first one ever. You know, you know do you play possession-by-possession possession in junior high and do you play possession-by-possession possession in freshman and JV ball? I don't think you do much. But in varsity basketball it is, and I think that was our first experience with that, and I just felt a few of them weren't loose enough for me. I mean, they just – possession by possession doesn't mean you tighten. Possession by possession just means you keep working for opportunities that, that allow you to be successful. And I, and I felt that uh, psychologically and mentally at those points, there was a couple times that I thought a couple of our guys showed tightness that really they just need to be loose and play the game. And, Coach, after you just now broke down this game, you can tell this is a real chess match. It, it was a lot of work. It was a lot of work. And, uh, you know, um, Coach Baumhold does a great job with his team, and he's got talented players. Uh, but just as all teams do, they have great strengths, and, and uh, they have some weaknesses. We exploited their weaknesses, I think, extremely well. But they still exploited ours as well. Uh, with those big wingspans, they really made it hard on us to move the basketball last night. And yet still, in the fourth quarter, we're in position with the lead to win the game. And, um, you know, you just it's, it's, it's just a few plays. We had talked about to our players, it's okay to win this 36 to 32 tonight. You know, it, it could happen. You know, just understand what you're in for here. And it was 39 to 32. The problem was we were on the wrong end. Let's say, Coach, uh, 
leading into the county tournament, obviously bad weather. You had some time off, and that's not always a good situation going into a big tournament like this. It is, and, and yet, you know, we both know Franklin probably had the same concept thing, but it did hurt us a little bit. And we've got some players right now, I think, as the competition picks up, uh, th that are questioning their ability to play. And confidence only comes through what you believe about yourself okay I mean we're very confident with our players I mean we get after them and things but as a coaching staff I mean we're very positive about what they do in practice we get the only thing we ever ever get after them about is effort you know if there's not the effort that it takes to be a champion then we're going to get after you but really our guys give effort every single day in practice they give effort in the summer um, so really, uh, their, their confidence, I think a few of them are, are, are thinking about the bigger picture instead of the very next thing, you know, they, they can say the right words that daily improvements important to them, but I don't know that that's truly what they believe because I think some of them look at, okay, here's who's next. If I can't do this against this guy. And, uh, so we're, we're going to have to do some work with that, but, uh, certainly, uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll keep working at it, and our players will believe. All right, Coach, hang tight. Uh, after the break, we'll come back and talk about the upcoming uh, schedule, some Mick games coming up for the Center Grove Trojans, but first, this timeout. Ray Skilm's got your truck, man. Big and little trucks, man. Into great locations, man. Skilm's got your truck, man. He's got SUVs, crossovers, long bed, short bed, flat bed, dunk care, two cabs, in a cab, half ton, three quarter ton, one ton, high Q band, cargo band, diesel engine, gas in the stock. The custom in the color you want, man. Ray Skilm's got your truck, man. Big and little trucks, man. Into great locations, man. Skilm's got your truck, man. Ray Skilm's got your truck, man. Welcome back to the Center Grove Boys Basketball Show. Kevin Conrad now joined by a couple of the varsity players with us. we got Michael Banker and along with Sam Hendershot, again, a couple of juniors. We'll start with Michael. And Michael, uh, having a great junior season. I know this has been special for you, uh, your third-year starter now for Center Grove. But just kind of tell us how your season's going for you. Yeah, I think it's going, it's going really well. I mean, we're starting to play as a team. we got great chemistry, and I think um, along the lines, we've, we've already played one Mick game, and we play our second one the, this coming Friday, and I think we're going to do well in the Mick this year. I will say, uh, Michael, I know it's a tough one to, to lose to Franklin this past weekend, but mm -hmm. Franklin, a very talented team, and they play that defense so, so well. Just uh, maybe recap that game for us a little bit. Yeah, I mean, you got to give credit to Franklin. They're a, a great ball club, and their defense, they play it well. And uh, I think we beat them in the first game, and they beat us now, so it's a 1-1 series. And I think it'll be fun to play them again in sectionals. Talk about your game in this uh, particular contest against Franklin. You come out, got it going early on, but then second half just couldn't quite find some opportunities to get to some scoring uh, uh, there in that second half. Yeah, it was tough. They're just they're just so long, and uh, out up top it was it was hard to penetrate because they really know how to help the helper up there, and uh, we just couldn't really get shots up really. But I think it was a good exp learning experience, and we'll get back to it. Michael, what I've been impressed so much with your game this year, it seems like no matter the opponent, you've just been very consistent with your game, whether it's scoring. And I know coaches asked you to do a lot more rebounding this year since mm -hmm. Center Grove as a team, maybe not as big as we've been in the past, but just talk about your how you try to be consistent with your game. Yeah, definitely consistency for me this year has been key. And uh, just like you said, the one thing that I need to try to do a little bit more is rebounding just because of, of our size. But I think the consistency is, is really what has helped my game this whole season. All right, we're going to hand the microphone over now to Sam Hendershot, uh, center for the Center Grove Trojans. He's a junior, first time playing on the varsity this year. And Sam, welcome to the show. Thank you. Sam, talk about your season this year. I, I know early on there was some question as far as who's going to play that middle, and you've been able to earn that spot. Yeah, at the beginning of the season, I wasn't really sure what I was going to be doing with like the team. But as the season grew on, I grew into more like a role into the team. And same, looking at some of your stats this year, the big game for you just a few weeks ago against Greenwood, you're able to score double digits with 10 points. Talk about your effort here against Greenwood. Yeah, um, it really helped with the guards like penetrating the uh, middle, and then I just slipped right in and they dished it off to me, and I had an easy layup right in there. 
Also, Sam, something I've noticed with your games, you got pretty good vision. It seems like uh, when they do get it to you, you can also make that pass to your teammates to, to set them up for some easy shots. Yeah, Coach always says look for the diagonal out. So I try to look for Tyler or a shooter on the opposite side. Going forward, Sam, got a rough uh, couple of games coming up, four or so games of the conference. It gets real competitive uh, starting this Friday against Ben Davis. Just your thoughts about the Giants. Well, I'm looking forward to it, and they're going to be a tough team to play just because they're in the mic, but it's going to be one to look forward to. Also, over the holiday break, uh, had to reschedule this Carmel game. Again, I know you missed some days with the weather uh, from practice, and I know that hurts hurts your team as you're trying to develop, but just talk about uh, playing Carmel next week. Well, I'm looking forward to it. It's my first time playing Carmel on varsity, and I've just always wanted to play them, and it's going to be a good game playing them at their place. All right, Sam Hendershot. Sam, thank you for being on the show with us today. We'll go back to Michael for just a couple of more questions. And Michael, now you've moved forward, uh, conference coming up, uh, a difficult stretch, mm -hmm. but uh, just going to have to play really good team basketball. What does Center Grove got to do here to prepare for Ben Davis and these games coming up? Yeah, we got to do everything that we've been talking about this whole year. We got to start off with offensive reboundings, and we just got to play as a team. And if we do that, we'll definitely win. Michael, maybe talk a little bit about you personally. I know you're being looked at, and college still a little ways away, but uh, mm -hmm. I know you got you know you're getting some offers and things of that nature. Maybe catch our fans up to date where things stand for you. Yeah, um, I have offers from Indiana State, Belmont, and Lehigh. Lehigh offered me uh, recently um, in um, the middle of the season um, that, uh, after the Martinsville game, but it's going well. I think it'll start picking up again after this season. And as far as when you might want to try to really hone in and make a decision on your future? Um, I'll probably make my decision somewhere like September, October before the high school season starts. All right. Sam Hendershot, Michael Banker, thanks for being on the show today, guys. Best of luck with the rest of the season. Thank you. And we'll have more of the Senegro Boys basketball show after this timeout. Rich Gilman's got your truck, man, big and little trucks, man, into great locations, man. Skim's got your truck, man. He's got SUVs, crossovers, long bed, short bed, flat bed, dumb care, two cabs, in a cab, half ton, three quarter ton, one ton, high cube, band, cargo band, diesel engine, gas in the stock, or custom in the color you want, man. Rich Gilman's got your truck, man, big and little trucks, man, into great locations, man. Skim's got your truck, man. Rich Gilman's got your truck, man. We'll go back to the Center Grove Boys basketball show, final segment of our show today, and Coach Hawkins now rejoins us. And Coach, uh, looking forward now for the Center Grove Trojans this Friday, hosting Mark James and the Ben Davis Giants for a conference game. It's going to be a special night, Center Grove Boys Basketball League Recognition Night. Well, that's all, always a huge night. As far as the opponent goes, they're, they're going to really be loaded up just because, uh, you know, they were eliminated in the first round of the uh, – Marion County Tournament, and so uh, they're definitely going to be ready to play after having 10, 12 days uh, to rest. But uh, um, we, will, uh, we, we will be ready, and I know our guys uh, intend on playing well. Um, I think it's, it's a game that, uh, uh, that both teams, again, have, have strengths and weaknesses, and then it's going to be our job to exploit their, their weaknesses. But uh, as far as the Center Grove Boys Basketball League recognition night, it's, it is a special night. Uh, there's been a lot of work done. Um, you know, we see all the little guys go out there and we play basketball. And we know in our league sometimes there's going to be problems or issues with facilities, time, those kinds of things. But, uh, boy, is it impressive the amount of time that our community gives back to our, to our youth. And uh, I know you've coached in our league and coach in our league. And uh, we certainly do appreciate men giving back to the little guys in our community to see that basketball can be fun, can be special, and uh, can be something uh, that's, that should be enjoyed. So, uh, you know, you look, uh, Kevin, at the majority of our coaches, and I, I, I can go now a lot more because our double weekends are coming to an end now, so our staff will be out on Saturdays and be around to see players. Um, I, I see an awful lot of positive coaching going on, so uh, it's really impressive. Coach, after this game on Friday against Ben Davis, uh, you do the makeup game with uh, Carmel. 
on January the 28th, which will be next Tuesday. Not an ideal situation, but you got to get it in somewhere. Well, it's not ideal for either team. They're coming off a double weekend, I think, uh, also. But it was the right thing to do. You know, after having four days where we couldn't practice, um, it, it was the right thing to do. Uh, we would have done the same for Carmel. And, uh, you know, you cannot take, uh, you know, our premium high school athletic basketball players and put them in a situation where they haven't practiced and expect them to play at a very high level. Your risk for injury would go up probably 50 percent or more, you know. So we have to condition our bodies. I mean, this is really a science of what we go through to, for rest, you know, for recovery and for exercise. I mean, we really pay attention to what we're doing. I mean, we, we hydrate consistently. I know a lot of people wouldn't believe that when we're stretching, we're hydrating. When we're, you know, uh, d different drills, we're hydrating. Even like a classroom with, with film, like we'll do film tomorrow night, there will be, we'll hydrate while we're doing the film. I mean, there's just certain things we really pay attention to. We make sure they eat. And um, so uh, certainly uh, it was the right thing to do, and we're looking forward to playing that game at Carmel. So, Coach, you go Friday this week against Ben Davis. Next Tuesday, Carmel on the road. Then you go next Saturday to Lawrence North. Again, just a real tough stretch here for you. It, it will be a tough stretch. Um, but um, I, uh, you know, I mean, every game is a hard game. Every game presents a different set of challenges. And, um, you know, if we can, you know, really zero in on that Ben Davis game and then, then we'll go, you know, into Carmel and then we'll go into Lawrence North. And that's the one thing at Center Grove. Every game is a huge challenge because if we're not playing in the MIC, which is rated as one of the top conferences in the United States, not in Indiana, in the United States, where professional basketball players come out of it, we're playing in, in our local area where, you know, you beat Center Grove and it really is a special thing. So we're really tested every single night. And uh, um, I welcome the, the challenge, uh, but uh, the adversity sometimes the, the kids have to really work through, and I know they will. And then following that Lawrence North game, you come back home. Warren Central, a team that's uh, good and continues to improve and get better. Yeah, and they just finished up playing in the Marion County Championship. They were runner-up in the Marion County Championship to Park Tudor, but uh, certainly an outstanding team. And they have a big center that's about 6'5 and 235, and he really, really does play the position well. We've got some nice perimeter players. So uh, we'll have our hands full, but it'll be home, and we'll be excited about that. Coach, again, let's reflect a little bit on your team now going forward. Things you need to work on as you go down this stretch of uh, conference games. Well, you know, I think any time you get to the conference tournament and you were not a, or, or the county tournament and you were not able to win the, the tournament, then you've got to assess, okay, if we can't win it this way, what are the things that we can do? And we, we do have some limited – I mean, we have some options still that we haven't gone to. Uh, but – they're limited options, and so the main thing we have to do is continue to work to make all of our players better. I mean, the, the coaches have to continue their commitment to the development of the individual player. The individual player has to continue their development to improve daily. Um, that That's for sure, but we may have to play a little bit different than we've done. Um, our strengths right now appear to be uh, we can handle the basketball. We share the basketball. In other words, 11 baskets last night, 10 assists. The other night, 16 baskets, 13 assists. So we are willing to share the basketball. We just have to figure out how we're going to open up and create driving lanes or penetrate and kick lanes, as we call it. Uh, and we might not be able to do it with people standing around the basket area. We may have to change up the personnel that are on the floor a little bit, but we will, and we're going to get ourselves in position because, uh, you know, as Joey said when he came right back in, everything we must do must be geared toward the, the sectional. And I can tell you this every day, um, you know, every team in the sectional has great strengths, great strengths. But, for example, we're going to work against that zone, and then are we going to, you know, what will we do against that zone if we have the lead next time? And uh, we're going to work against Franklin Central switching man-to-man, -man. and the next time, what will we do? Uh, so we're going to take each team in the sectional, make sure we're working on those things all the way through March right now, and get our team in position to be a champion in March. 
Coach, as the Trojans uh, head down the stretch here, the fan sport's been great. I thought the crowd was really good this uh, past Saturday in the county championship. Well, I, I think so. You know, I, I, for whatever reason, when you're in a championship game, you get zoned in. But I knew there it, it was a good crowd. It was a nice crowd for the semifinals, I thought, on Friday. That's one thing I did notice because prior to our game, I was out there a little bit more. Uh, but um, – it was great support. We appreciate it. I, th I think our community really knows that this team is giving what they've got, and they do enjoy the people on the team. We've got high-character kids that are good academic, and they treat people right. I received two letters this last week uh, from some people I don't even know. Our kids were in a restaurant uh, a night after a game, and they just observed a group of guys and girls together how they just were so mannerly, how they how – they, made sure the waitress was tipped properly and they communicated and somebody sent me a letter about that and that's a pretty awesome thing you know when you know your kids are doing the right things out in the public so because um, uh, I know they do the right things w with us so we're going to keep working and I think uh, we'll continue to be a team that everyone can be proud of. Coach as we wrap up our show we got to thank our sponsors Arnie's Restaurant right here in Greenwood with a nice fire for us today to keep <laughs> us warm and also of course Race Gilman Automotive Group. Absolutely. Uh, you know, we just can't thank Arnie's enough for this, and we appreciate the Diet Coke beverages, too, because uh, we're both raspy <laughs> after a county tournament. And uh, then uh, we also, you know, everything that Ray Skilman does, you know, we all have decisions we make in life, whether we want to be generous or not. And uh, certainly Mr. Skillman is uh, a, a generous human being for everything that he does for all the programs, not just athletics at Center Grove. So we definitely thank him, Kevin. All right. Center Grove head coach Cliff Hawkins. Best of luck with the upcoming conference games. Thank you very much. And I hope the, the public will still keep coming out there and, and supporting our team because I know they're going to give a great effort. All right. That's going to do it for this edition of the Center Grove Boys Basketball Show. For Coach Cliff Hawkins, I'm Kevin Conrad saying so long, everyone.